Thank you very much for coming today. We are very excited about the news that we have to share. Today, uh, we are going to go ahead and get started with the press conference. My name is Elizabeth Westhoff. I'm the Director of Communications for the Archdiocese of St. Louis. And after uh, the Archbishop speaks and Bishop-elect Rubichuso speaks, we will then take some questions from the media, and then we'll wrap it up promptly by 11-ish? All right, thanks very much, Archbishop. Thank you, and thank you for coming. I'm very pleased by the action taken by His Holiness Pope Francis today. The Holy Father has appointed Monsignor Mark Rubitusso as the Auxiliary Bishop of St. Louis. Congratulations. Bishop Alec Rivetuso was ordained to the priesthood by Archbishop May in May in 1988. And for nearly 30 years, he has served as our archdiocese as a pastor, a teacher, and vicar general. Uh, by this appointment today, he's gone from being a senior priest to a baby bishop. <laughs> His Episcopal ordination is scheduled for May 2nd uh, at 2 p.m. at the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis. A native of St. Louis, he's a graduate of St. Mary's High School, and I should say a proud graduate, and also Cardinal Gunnan College and Kenrick School of Theology. He has earned a master's degree in a licentiate in canon law from St. Paul University in Ottawa, Canada. And in 2005, Pope Benedict XVI appointed him a prelate of honor with the title Monsignor. On behalf of the clergy, the religious, and lay faithful in the Archdiocese, Bishop Elector Vatuso, I want to offer our congratulations and thank you for accepting the Holy Father's invitation. This will provide for us tremendous service uh, for this local church, and we look forward to your leadership as an auxiliary bishop. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I am overwhelmed uh, and I am appreciative of you being here to show your support and your love and prayers. And uh, it's just a, a wonderful, uplifting experience for me to see that there are so many who are there to help me to be of service to all of you. Uh, so I want to thank you for that at the beginning of this. Uh, I am profoundly touched by the confidence the Holy Father has placed in me in this appointment as Auxiliary Bishop of St. Louis. I know that I have written him and asked for his prayers, and I assured him of my prayers, uh, respect, and obedience. At the same time, I'm honored and privileged to assist Archbishop Carlson. It's always been a great joy to be with him and to serve at his side, and now this greater capacity as bishop is another wonderful opportunity and joy to be able to shepherd with him the wonderful faithful of our archdiocese. I have a great love for the church in St. Louis. And I relied upon the examples of the previous auxiliary bishops uh, before me who have given their lives and love for the wonderful people here as well as uh, served so faithfully uh, the needs of our archdiocese. And I know many of them have uh, called me already and assured me of prayers. And I just ask for their continued prayers to serve us faithfully and lovingly as they have for us in the past. I know I look forward to serving in this new role, and I do indeed ask for your prayers. I have to say at the, uh, the conclusion of my statement that I am very grateful for all the prayers and support and love and, and outpouring of, of support and affirmation in receiving this call from the Holy Father and all the good uh, support from the faithful and so many friends and family. Uh, I couldn't have had more affirmation in my life, and everyone has been so gracious to me in the midst of uh, assuming this new uh, capacity as bishop for our church. Uh, what a humbling experience it is for me, and I know that in that humility I ask for the prayers that I need from you, and be assured of my prayers, my love, and commitment to serve uh, not only our church but the greater community. I want to be of service and I want to continue to be Christ in your midst and to show the good shepherd who cares for the needs of all. And once again, uh, God bless you for your wonderful support 
And may the Lord truly be with all of you and, and truly bless you and your loved ones. Uh, thank you for everything and thank you for your good support and prayers for me. softball questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this world, what do you see as your main kind of objectives or your main you know, purpose in, in, in the role you're in now as opposed to what perhaps you're in? Okay. Well, I, my, my, my primary objective is I feel like in, in a way for it's a, an analogy, like an associate pastor to a pastor. I feel like I'm the Archbishop's associate pastor now and hopefully will be a gracious uh, pastor to me. But I know that... <laughs> I am here to help him, and I'm, I want to be able to kind of lighten the load for him as a shepherd of this archdiocese. How can I be of help to you? And that's why I ask that every day, and every time I see him, there's something I can do to aid you as you shepherd and love the people of God here and for the greater community. So I want to make sure I'm here for him. And I know we have many challenges we're facing as a church as well as our, for our own community. Uh, I know that I want to be part of the solutions. I want to be a help. I want to uh, try to bring people together rather than see people who are divided or hurting. Uh, we want to bring healing and love and reconciliation. We want to bring, hopefully, a community that comes together to truly be about goodness and to uplift one another rather than seeing the sadness of what we have in our world today. So hopefully uh, we're all doing our part for doing good. I want to join my efforts with doing that as well and help the Archbishop and Shepherd in the, the diocese for the greater good of all. Bishop, you last year, right? Do you have any specific priorities that you feel that you're called to this? Or do you know that vocations or education or day's vocation? Right. Okay. I think you covered most of what I was going to say, but <laughs> <laughs> the point is have you come up here. That's good. No, I, I will say evangelization will be one of the top priorities. You know, as all of us know, we have many lapsed Catholics, many who are falling away, uh, many people are struggling in their faith, many who are, uh, you know, doubting whether or not uh, their faith is, is meaningful in their life. Uh, so I want to make sure that, one, we help people to encounter Jesus in their life. I want to be with uh, uh, many faith denominations to help us to have a united front with helping people to know that God loves them and we're here to serve them in love. Uh, and I want to help our evangelization efforts so that people can come to know what we know, the joy of living our faith, the joy of living uh, Jesus in our life, and the joy of living our life like Jesus uh, for others. And obviously education is another important uh, challenge and priority for me. I want to make sure that as we're having the renaissance of Catholic education, that we're about going out to our, our parish schools and our high schools, and as well as working with religious who have their schools, as well as working with the greater community, with the uh, public schools, as well as charter schools. We're all here to serve the bottom line for the greater good of the children. And I want all of us to be able to work together for that greater good. And I believe that all of us need to do our part with coming together to achieve that objective. Okay, you're welcome. You alluded to it there, but what do you see as the biggest priorities and challenges for the Archdiocese now, can you speak a little about your Episcopal model? Okay, um, my Episcopal model will be the love of Christ impels us, and I picked it for two reasons. One was that uh, as a Catholic and Christians, we really believe that uh, all should be motivated by living the love of Jesus in our life, all that we do. And the second reason I chose that is from 2 Corinthians, and St. Paul talks about fractions and divisions, 
that are out there that he was trying to bring together. And I think in our own times, we see so many fractions and divisions. And the only way we're going to bring people together, as I see it from a person of faith, is by loving as Christ loves, bringing healing to visions, and helping people to know that we're here to work together and not to work against each other. So the love of Christ empowers us uh, as a, a challenge and a, and a call, hopefully for us to rally the truth for everyone to uh, deal with the divisions and tensions we find present in our society today and trying to make an effort to do something in a positive way for helping people to have a better experience of humanity. And the biggest challenges you think face the archdiocese going forward? Okay, I think uh, probably one of the biggest challenges is that we need to step up to the plate and be leaders. Uh, leadership is so important, and I think being a leader in the midst of our church, as well as calling other people to be uh, with their leadership of other communities, other faith denominations, I think as we're, we're being leaders, to be a really good leader is to engage everyone in the efforts that we need to make to make a difference. Uh, we can't do it by ourselves. We need to be able to engage people to make things happen. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. There are uh, press packets available to the media if you need those on your way out. See Gabe. Thank you very much. May we have your blessing before we just leave today? Sure. Okay. <laughs> this is his first Episcopal blessing. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you always. Thank you. Thank you.